Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Wednesday, July 9th, 8.45 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. The 20th, 28th episode of Fountaining at Kilauea has now ceased. Yeah, it lasted just a few hours, but it was spectacular. And we've got the entire live stream over on Rumble at Magnetic Reversal News. And hundreds of earthquakes detected at, Mount, at Washington's Mount Rainier. What's going on? Well, buckle up and keep calm. It's boom time. Severe storms and flooding possible in the east. We're talking about copious amounts of moisture will contribute to widespread rain and thunderstorms in the east over the next couple of days. Excessive rainfall could trigger flooding in spots, including in the Baltimore, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. areas. A few storms might turn severe and produce damaging wind gusts and potentially even hail. We currently have a special marine warning offshore here uh, at the Delmarva. And what is this? A severe thunderstorm warning in Maryland. Yeah, for Somerset and Worcester counties. 19 severe weather warnings and watches, including a tornado warning for Delaware. So heed the warnings. And you can see here on Tornado HQ that huge line of showers that may produce some of that flash flooding. And we're talking all the way from South Carolina up into the Catskills. So check out Tornado HQ for all of the live severe weather updates. And most of the severe weather warnings and watches are in North, South Dakota, and Nebraska overnight. These storms will be moving slowly to the east. So if you live in one of these regions, come over to Tornado HQ Live and enable the audio alerts. And with all that thunderstorm activity in the east, we do see some power outages. 26,000 plus without power in North Carolina tonight and 20,000 plus in Virginia, 10,000 plus in Maryland, 9,000 plus in Georgia, 7,000 plus in PA. So this is going to continue to increase overnight because, well, the storms, they're not over. And there are widespread and huge amounts of rain, wind, and potentially hail. And that brings us to the full forecast. Severe thunderstorms and heavy rain in the mid-Atlantic. Heat and fire weather concerns in the West. Scattered strong to severe thunderstorms and heavy rainfall will continue through tonight across the mid-Atlantic. With heavy rainfall flooding and severe winds as the primary threats. You can see the warnings and watches from New Jersey all the way south into the Carolinas here. Heat will continue through Thursday over the southwest with extreme heat warnings in effect for Arizona, southern Nevada, and southern California. We've also got red flag warnings out in the west, so we're going to see a lot of wildfires popping up as we pray for rain for this region as it is very sparse on the models. And here we can see on the GFS model that line of heavy storms. Three hours from now, let's move it through. It's going to slowly move east and dissipate by morning here, move offshore. Not before tomorrow, a second group of storms uh, lines up. And it looks like an explosion here Thursday night into Friday over Iowa. Oop, I clicked the wrong button there. That looks like a big system there. Thursday, Friday morning, quick pop-up. And here we can see Saturday and then Sunday and Monday. Take a look at the total accumulated precipitation to see where any of those flooding threats are going to be centralized here in the mountains of Virginia, West Virginia and Maryland, central PA. And you can see that those flooded regions are along the Appalachian spine there, basically, just in the foreground. Japan Islanders are sleepless after 900 earthquakes in just two weeks. Can you imagine that? More than 900 earthquakes have shaken a remote and sparsely populated island chain in southern Japan over two weeks, keeping residents anxious and awake at night. Seismic activity has been very active in the seas around Tokara Island since the 21st of June, according to authorities, when a magnitude 5.5 earthquake struck on Wednesday. There have been no reports of damage no tsunami warnings have been raised, but authorities have advised residents to prepare to evacuate if needed. And that's because all of these earthquakes, in fact, over 900, could be prequakes to a major earthquake coming soon. 
The Takara area has experienced clusters of earthquakes in the past, but the frequency of the most recent tremors is quite unusual. Japan is one of the most seismically active nations on Earth, owing its location on the so-called Pacific Ring of Fire, where many tectonic plates meet. It experiences 1,500 earthquakes each year, and 902 weeks is just well, well above the threshold. So prayers for Japan. Seismic update. No quakes of note. I lie. We had a 3.4 just moments ago in Valmy, Nevada. That's interesting. Overall, normal activity worldwide. Some inland quakes here in South America, including a 4.3 in Brazil and a 5.1 in Argentina. And Japan is not the only place rumbling these days. Hundreds of earthquakes have been detected at Washington's Mount Rainier. The quakes began just before 1.30 a.m. and have been occurring at a rate of several times per minute, according to officials. Now, is this activity scary? Is Rainier going to erupt? No. Stay calm, Seattle. The earthquake swarm at Mount Rainier is normal. What do I mean by that? Well, so far, hundreds of earthquakes have been detected, with several occurring per minute, with depths ranging from 1.2 and 3.7 miles below the summit. No earthquakes have been felt at the surface. Every year, more than 100 earthquakes are detected at or near Mount Rainier, with an average of just nine earthquakes per month. Swarms of earthquakes typically occur once or twice a year, but they usually have fewer events than what started Tuesday. So what may be going on here is superheated groundwater and gases, a.k.a. hot fluids, flow into an area of existing faults triggering small movements, which are the earthquakes we're seeing. And this means that there is an active magma system lying deep beneath Rainier that will erupt in the future, but this seismic swarm may not be indicative of it. And you can see we now have 306 earthquakes. So that number has been increasing all day. 306 earthquakes in the last 30 days, most of them happening in the last week. And let's just blow up Mount Rainier, and we will show you how many earthquakes this actually looks like. So here is Rainier Park, and let's just bring it in. Look at the clustering. And all those in red are just in the last two hours. So there's at least one, two, three, four, five, six I can count here. The orange in the last two days. And they are all across the region. Take a look at that. So we'll keep a close eye on Rainier. If this swarm increases, it means that an eruption is imminent, especially if it starts clustering here on the caldera, which it's not doing. So it looks like the, the general main magma field, uh, something is recharging it, heating the groundwater, and causing this seismic swarm. So stay tuned for more updates. Now, Kilauea's 28th, 28th episode began this morning and ended just moments ago with lava fountains near record heights, 1,200 feet into the air. Lava fountains started by spewing upwards of 150 feet into the air, but the fountaining height increased by dawn, with USGS scientists saying the fountains nearly reached 1,200 feet by mid-morning. And we have all the footage you need over... Well, let's first, let's take a look at this. And you can see the caldera rim back there. Yeah, this is well above the rim, so visible from everywhere. Absolutely fantastic. And you can watch the entire 13 hours of the eruption. Well, it's actually just about nine hours long, so make sure you scroll through. Over at Magnetic Reversal News on Rumble, we live stream 13 hours and 20 minutes of it. So you don't have to. So you can get a good night's sleep and, well, not miss out on any of the action the next day. Worldwide Volcano News for Wednesday, the 9th of July. Dukono, first on the list, 7,000-foot blast there. Liwa Toby still puffing and passing. Sungay, possible volcanic ash. Here we have Semadu, who knew, now you do. A small pyroclastic flow today. Hey, hey. Kirishima on the list, possible activity occurring there. Ibu, volcanic ash reported. Liwatobi, an eruption was reported there. Liwatolol, 8,000 foot puff. Raventador, ongoing volcanic ash. Nevado de Cruiz to 24,000 feet. Semaru to 15,000 feet. 
Ducono, volcanic ash was reported. Ibu, eruption was reported. Santa Guito, 14,000 foot blast. Sukurajima, 6,000 foot. Kilauea to 10,000, the 28th paroxysm. Kirishima, possible activity continuing today. Nevado de Cruiz, a volcanic ash advisory. Shivalush on the list, 13,000 foot blast. And we've got Kilauea to 10,000, Semadu to 15,000. Dukono eruption was reported. And wrapping up the list is Kirishima, possible activity continuing. Early risers spot rare night shining clouds. These are noctilucent clouds. Rare clouds that form in summer high up in the Earth's atmosphere have been seen in parts of Scotland. All the links will be below. Space weather for July 10th. It is now the 10th, according to UTC. You could see just two impulsive flares about the same time of day, day after day. Nothing significant happening. 3D geomagnetic forecast all quiet. And we do have a major coronal hole which is about to face Earth and is now trans-equatorial. So we're going to get a plasma stream coming from this baby in about, in just a few days, which is why they've increased that KP to 3 on the 12th. So we'll keep a class, close eye on that for you. Now, there has been a potential astronomers appeal for help as the video appears showing right there. And we will link this article below and maybe have more to say about it in the future when we get more details. Now, when to see July's full buck moon? Well, it's tomorrow, and it peaks at 4.37 p.m. Not only will it be full, but it will be the lowest moon for the entire 18.6-year lunar standstill cycle, and it will be the largest moon if you watch it rise. It's mind-blowing. And a great article from a good friend of the channel, Chris Martz, where he lays it all on the line. No, it's not chemtrails. It's not cloud seeding. You're all just idiots. So read the article and enjoy. And in just a few minutes, over at Magnetic Reversal News on YouTube, transient luminous events, 300,000-year-old wooden tools, and Earth's magnetic field and oxygen correlate. Join us for an amazing scientific expose, which lasts about an hour and will blow your mind. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We need to hit 100,000K by the end of the year. We need your support. Also, after you subscribe, hit the bell. And be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. And we'll see you in a few minutes over at Magnetic Reversal News on YouTube. <laughs>